Okay, hi. Now, in this video, we're going to speak about the transition metals. Now, in case you don't know already, the transition metals are the metals in the periodic table, which are located here. So, in general, just highlighting them, these are the transition metals. They're the ones which you learn are not uh, able to be put into groups, because obviously we have group 1, group 2, group 3, and so on in the periodic table. Uh, but these transition metals includes these down here as well, not the ones in red, but the ones above. They can't be put into groups, that's why they're found in this middle block. Okay, now the, first of all, it's important to recognise that even though they have these different properties, they are metals. So they are metals, and they possess typical metal properties. And those metal properties are that they are good conductors, good conductors, and that is both heat and electricity. So good conductors of heat and electricity. Obviously we use copper for most of our wires and this is copper right here. It is a transition metal. Now just like a lot of metals, they are very strong. Okay, they are not the weak metals. For example, sodium and potassium are, are fairly weak. They've got a low density. The transition metals have a higher density. They are quite strong. So they also have a high density. High density. And they all, well not all of them, but most of them have a high melting and boiling point. High melting and boiling point. Now, there is one exception to this, and that is mercury. So, so I'm going to say, with the exception, oh, move that, except mercury. Because we know that mercury is actually a liquid at room temperature. It's found in thermometers. It's the liquid inside a lot of thermometers. Okay, this is mercury here, Hg. You can see at the bottom right of this group. Now, we don't need to know why it has these properties, but we just need to know that it is an exception. Okay, now that's all well and good. A lot of metals have similar properties to this. They are strong, good conductors with a high density. Obviously, group 1 metals are not as strong, and they don't have as high density. And their boiling points and melting points are generally lower, apart from mercury, of course. But what makes the transition metals special is their chemical properties, not their physical properties. So in a different colour, I'm going to say chemical properties. Okay, now the first thing to note is that they are not very reactive. They are not very reactive. That's because, well, not because, that is in comparison to things like the group 1 alkali metals, which are extremely reactive. Potassium is top of the um, reactivity series. Um, all the group 1s are very reactive. The transition metals are less so. They do react, but not all of them will react um, in the same way that those other metals do. So, things like water and oxygen. So, not react well with H2O or oxygen, which is O2. Now, because they are less reactive and they will not corrode or rust uh, anywhere near as easily as other metals... This means that they are useful, or many of them, not all of them of course, can be useful as structural materials. Structural materials. Okay. Okay, now, now it gets slightly more interesting. So, they, a lot of them can form coloured compounds. So, it can form coloured compounds. For example, copper sulfate, so copper sulfate, and we write copper 2 sulfate, is blue, funnily enough from the colour of the writing. Copper 2 sulfate is blue, and this comes from the Cu2 plus ions, okay? Now, you'll see that this charge here, the 2 plus, is represented by the Roman numerals in these brackets. And that is pretty common. The reason you'll find these uh, Roman numerals written is because the transition metals can also form other ions. So copper can also form Cu plus ions. Okay? This copper ion has a 1 plus charge, 
whereas this copper iron has a 2 plus charge. Now that is very different to the other metals that you've studied so far, because the alkali metals in group 1, they have to have a 1 plus charge in their ions. The alkali earth metals, or the group 2 metals, have to have a plus 2 charge. But the transition metals can form multiple ions. And that is actually why we call them transition metals, because the transition is from a 1 plus charge to a 2 plus charge, or vice versa. And we can also get other charges on other metals. For example, chromium. Chromium can form 2 plus ions and 3 plus ions. So we'd have Cr2 plus. Uh, whoops, we'd have Cr. 3 plus. Okay, they are both chromium, but they have a different charge again. And so let's just say, for example, you were forming chromium sulfate. You could form chromium 2 sulfate. I've just shortened it there, but it would be written chromium as in the word chromium. Chromium 2 sulfate. You could also have something like chromium. I'll write the whole thing out this time. Chromium 3 oxide. Okay, so if chromium 3 plus forms an oxide, you'll have chromium 3 oxide. If the 2 plus ion forms a sulfate, you'll have chromium 2 sulfate. So the Roman numerals really tell you the charge on the, uh, the metal ion. Now, finally, one more example. Iron, which is a metal you all have heard of, has the symbol Fe. And that can form iron 2 plus, which has this green color. Okay, and it can also form iron 3 plus. Iron 3 plus, which has a reddish brown color. I've drawn it brown here, but it's a reddy brown color. Okay, so we can form iron 2 oxide, we can form iron 3 oxide, and they all obviously have different formulas. Okay, so this one is written as iron 3 oxide if it was in an oxide, and the iron 2 would be written as iron 2 oxide, like so. Now, one final point to make on transition metals is due to the fact that they can change their, uh, their charge, they are very useful as catalysts. So they are commonly used as catalysts. Okay, you don't need to know exactly why and how that works. Okay, but because they have these special chemical properties, we can use those um, and use them as catalysts. For example, when we make margarine, so manufacture of margarine, okay, we use nickel as a catalyst. Okay, so nickel is a transition metal and we can use it as a catalyst in the manufacture of margarine. Okay, now I'm going to stop there. I hope that's given you an insight into the transition metals and their properties. Uh, if you do have any questions on that, please do feel free to send me a direct email using the link below or write a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. But please don't forget to subscribe, um, put a like on the video if you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.